consequence of not recognizing, dehumanizing aspect of American history is that we have inherited a sense of disconnection from our own humanity. I've been a psychotherapist since 1992. I have a master's in social work and am a licensed clinical social worker. Um, I've had a private psychotherapy practice for many years, but in 1998, I was introduced to what's called systemic family constellations. So since then, um, the constellation work has been the primary way in which I work with both individuals and groups. One of the um, examples of how um, collective history and collective trauma fields still impact us today uh -huh. is in my book I read about when slavery was outlawed uh -huh. in the mid-1800s. Shortly after this, the American corporation as an institution started to really take off. But the corporation replaced slavery so I'd like to read a little bit about this. There were very few corporations in early U.S. history. The modern corporation was born out of the industrial age's goal of manufacturing as much product, such as steel, per hour. The rise of the American corporation also coincides with the end of chattel slavery in the United States. During the 1800s, corporate leaders hired lawyers who successfully helped corporations receive legal authority to be treated as a corporate person. The corporation is a legal person designed to be concerned only for stockholders. It has no soul, no body, and is driven by one goal, the bottom line, profits. Corporate practice does not typically discern is there such a thing as enough. Corporations are required by law to place financial interests above everything else, even the public good. During the same time, the 14th Amendment was passed. It was designed to grant citizenship to and protect the civil liberties of recently freed slaves, prohibit states from depriving any person of his life, liberty, or property without due process of law, and grant equal protection under the law. Between 1890 and 1910, 307 cases were brought before the courts under the 14th Amendment. Only 18 of these cases were in defense of African Americans' individual liberties. The overwhelming majority, 288 cases, were defending the rights of corporations. Whether our ancestors were dehumanized through enslavement, through genocide, through other means, or if our ancestors participated in dehumanizing other, we have inherited the trauma bond, a sense of disconnection from our own humanity. What happens in a trauma bond, dehumanizing experience, is when one person takes something from another, when one people takes something from another people that they have no right to take, there is a disconnection that happens in that experience, both for the people who were taken from and for the people who take. No matter whether we came here as a recent immigrant, whether our ancestors came here a generation or two ago, didn't participate in these collective experiences, the fact that we're all here now because of these larger structures, like the corporate structure, like the financing of the American economy that really was financed by slavery. These inheritances belong to all of us, no matter what our skin color is. We can see with our current President Obama what a lightning rod skin color is. He shows us the larger collective field of race that's still there waiting to be healed. He didn't create it. It's been waiting there for us to see it. Many people with white skin 
don't recognize fully what the function of skin color has been historically through colonialism. White skin justified the dehumanizing of those without white skin. We can't fix that history. We can't change what's happened. But if we see that, that was the purpose, then it allows us to have a different conversation. It allows us to move into a place of seeing how these things we have in common are what's necessary so that the history of division that skin color has really been about can be lifted.